It's the person that you believe you are. That's where all your problems lie. You see, you're not what or who you believe you are. The story you've been telling yourself isn't real. It's just a perceptional story. It's just a, it's just a narrative. You've literally been playing a role, a part, a character in this beautiful play we call life. On this beautiful playground we call the world, the universe. And instead of just playing the character, you've genuinely believed that you are the character. You've begun to identify as the character. And when you identify as the character, well, then you start living a legalistic life to try to please a God that's outside of you or to please others, even though those others in actuality and reality is just you playing another character, another role. And as a result of not understanding that you're playing a character, that you're playing a role, you get really fucking serious. And you start getting stressed out because you have deadlines, because the story, the one that you believe you are, is just a memory. It's a linear self. And that linear you is living under the burden of time. Not just calendar time, but psychological time. You genuinely believe that you are in this place and this time. And that the you that is existing or manifesting or in this moment is this long story that you believe about yourself. Well, what if all of those memories are beautiful, are powerful, are awesome, but what if it's not really you? In other words, what if you could stop identifying as that self? Would you have PTSD if you knew that the PTSD was the result of you genuinely believing that that story was real and that you were the one that went through that thing and that that incident, that issue that was actually real, like it happened perceptionally just like you remember it happening. The thing is it's subjective. It is a completely subjective narrative that you're believing about yourself. And this is where all the problems lie. This is where all the issues lie. And when we escape this, when we just come into the realization that who we really are, that what you really are is the space in which this whole narrative is happening in. You are the divine essence that's animating the body that has been given the name Fred or Laura, Kevin, Silas. But when you step outside of that narrative, even if it's just for a second, even if you just touch it for a second, oh, freedom is there. Freedom to just be to manifest in whatever way is pleasurable and beneficial. This is where true creative ingenuity dwells. This is what you really are. Now this can't be taught. What I'm telling you can't be taught. I can tell you this and you're gonna go, oh great, I'm not, it's not me. And you, some of you are gonna think I'm nuts. And a small percentage of you is gonna be like, yeah, it's not me. And for a very small percentage of you, you're going to go, oh, it's going to be that aha moment. And you're going to step away from this video going, wow, all the issues I've had, all the problems that I've faced in my life, they weren't really problems. And the one that was experiencing those problems isn't really who I am. And you can step right into this present moment of awareness, apart from the memories that suggest who you are. And in this moment, we're nothing, we're nobody, we're perfect. 
and then we breathe back into this body. An animating essence. And now we're in this body, in this mind, apart from the story. And we get to create the story, get to, get to write the story, because we're the producer, we're the actor, actress. Or that which is animating even the scenery that you're playing the part within. So I just wanna encourage you right now. Step into this moment of bliss, into the perfection of this moment. This is what my mentor, he was being killed. He was actually being hung on a cross. And he looked out over all of creation and it's recorded that he said, it is finished. And people have used that story and they've tried to create some sort of it is finished theology that it's what they call the finished work theology, which I taught for a long time. But the word finished there really means perfect. And it wasn't that he had perfected it. It was that he had really sunk into the realization and was declaring to everyone that despite your circumstances, listen, man, he was in excruciating pain. But what he was saying is in the midst of this excruciating pain, I can see how perfect this moment is. This moment in all of its splendor is perfect. And he could look at the individuals that hung him on the cross and say, you are perfect. Because to him, the circumstances didn't dictate how he felt. To him, the situation that he was in the midst of was not real. And he died on the cross. And then he transcended the form in such a way as to show us we're not the body. That's why he told Pilate, he said, you don't have the power over me. I tell you the truth, only I have the power to lay down my life and I have the power to raise it up again. And you, who you really are, what you really are, when you realize this reality, this truth, you have the power to raise up life in whatever form you'd like. You have the power to speak to your body and get this body to transform and to play and to enjoy. You have the power to look at the worst situation, no matter what you're going through, and declare, like Jesus, it is perfect.